and welcome to the July 8th, 2019 Newton Town Council meeting. If we can please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Lorraine, if you could take the roll please, call, please. Mr. Dixon? Here. Mrs. Diglio? Here. Mr. Flynn? Here. Mr. Schlaffer? Mayor LaFoy? Here. And Councilman Schlaffer emailed ahead today to uh, be excused for the record. In accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this regular meeting was given to the two newspapers of record and posted on the official bulletin board on January 4th, 2019. Everyone received the minutes from the June 24th, 2019 regular meeting in their council packets. Do we have any additional changes, amendments, deletions, corrections? Well done. Other than those submitted? Okay, can I have a motion on the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of June 24th, 2019 regular meeting. I'll second that motion. I have a motion by Councilwoman Diglio and a second by Deputy Mayor Flynn. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Mrs. Diglio? Yes. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mayor LaFoy? Yes. All right, at this point in the meeting, the Town Council welcomes comments from any member of the public on any topic to help facilitate an orderly meeting and to permit the opportunity for anyone who wishes to be heard. Speakers are asked to take one turn at the microphone and please limit their comments to five minutes. The clerk will keep time. If reading from a prepared statement, please provide a copy and email a copy to the clerk's office after making your comments so it may be properly reflected in the minutes. Do we have any public comments at this time? Hi, Tracy Paparella, 56 Halstead. Um, I was wondering, hoping that there is an update on the Newton pool. Uh, last time uh, we were given an update was six weeks ago and the borings were supposed to be set to May 31st. I understand that part of the study is done and suburban engineers were just waiting for that part to be finished to come up with their final report. So I'm wondering when that will be, fin will be uh, given to you if you have it. Um, if you've discussed it, I know that uh, last meeting you were talking about the Babe Ruth uh, report, so the pool ought to be finished soon, correct? I can let Tom uh, elaborate on that, but I might as well uh, address that now. Our timeline hasn't changed. The council expects to have the recommendations and the report from the engineers at the September meeting. We did talk about the Babe Ruth field and its issues last meeting, but nothing on the pool at this point. We have not received any reports. Okay. So the study is not going to be finished until September 9th? The engineers are coming to present to the council their findings at the September meeting. I think we've had that scheduled now for a little while. Okay. Will there be any open discussion about the pool like you discussed the Babe Ruth pool at the last meeting? It'll be, it'll be an open presentation, absolutely. Was there a presentation about the Babe Ruth field? There was. Oh, i sorry. I missed it. Sorry. I, I was in Florida with my grieving mother. Sorry. Um, also, um, thank you very much for, um, for facilitating the transportation uh, to the Hackettstown pool. Um, I have learned, though, I, I know it just started last Monday, um, and it sounds as though it might be off to a slow start because a lot of people don't know about it. Um, so I'm hoping that you could help facilitate getting the word out to, um, to, the, to the town. Um, not just electronically because a lot of people don't have internet. Um, I've dropped off flyers and things um, to a lot of our residents uh, to educate them on the pool, or you know, the access to the Hackettstown pool. So I'm just asking for your help for that because it is going to be a hot summer. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Any other comments at this time? Okay. Teresa Marquina, 7 Liberty. Um, I just, I, I think maybe what would help is, I know that there's programs going on in the school, so maybe sending out, I don't know if you guys sent out flyers for the uh, Hackettstown pool, you know, busing to the, like through the schools, but that may be a good route um, for some of those kids that are there. So just an idea. Thank you. Anyone else? 
Okay, we'll close that portion of the meeting. Um, and the, I think what most of our attendants here for tonight, we have over 70 people tonight um, in the audience, and it's uh, very wonderful, really, to see um, our police department here. Um, I think most of you know um, this council likes to see our law enforcement in the council chambers and an opportunity to say hello and thank you. Um, before we move to our swearing-in ceremony, I have this for my public comments later, but I have a feeling that many of you won't be here for that portion. So I do just want to recognize um, Chief Michael Richards, the Newton uh, Police Department, the Center for Prevention and Counseling for the Law Enforcement Leadership Award from PARI, the Police Assisted Addiction and Recovery Initiative, for your leadership in um, the police department's uh, embracing really of the clear program and leading that charge in Sussex County um, I know the our entire department has worked on that initiative and um, Chief Richards went to Massachusetts to accept that reward but um, humbly and I think um, accurately reflected in his comments that he was accepting that award on behalf of all of you that are in the field every day um, not looking at the opioid issue as necessarily an enforcement issue, but an opportunity to lend a hand to those that are suffering from addiction and using the resources of the Newton Police Department um, and the history that so many of you have in this community, um, living locally, living in town, um, knowing our residents so well, um, and the support that you all provide uh, to those that are suffering from addiction, um, and uh, not only saving lives, um, but looking to help uh, those that need the help and the Newton Police Department leading the way in the county in an initiative and really encouraging so many other departments to um, be part of the clear initiative and be a part of the solution um, so Chief Richards thank you very much for representing Newton so well and and um, thank you for your continued leadership on this initiative I know that our friends over at the um, Center for Prevention and Counseling are incredibly proud um, of this initiative and I think um, as a person that works in nonprofit as well, I know that this program has really um, shed some light and expanded awareness for the Center for Prevention and Counseling. It has opened doors for funding needs that they've had um, and certainly collaborations in the county and uh, outside of the county. So thank you, Chief Richards. Thank you to the ent entire department, um, all the personnel that work on this initiative. On behalf of the thousands of lives that you have helped and saved, we really appreciate you. So Chief Richards um, might want to make him wait a little bit longer. Did you have something to say before we actually do our ceremony? So um, many are here tonight for, uh, for Tom Tosti. He's a lifelong resident of Stillwater Township. Just a, a little bit about Tom. Um, we, we finally got him to leave Stillwater. So uh, you're into the naked city, what they call it, right? Into Newton. <laughs> Uh, Swordswood proper is not really still order. Okay. He's a graduate of Kittatinny Regional High School uh, in 1989, and then he went to Sussex County Community College and transferred to East Stroudsburg, where he received a Bachelor of Science degree in Sociology and Criminal Justice. After college, he was hired by the Sussex County Juvenile Detention Center, where he was employed for six months before being hired by the Stillwater Police in 1997. Uh, he worked there until February 2003 when he transferred to Newton PD. Uh, once here, he uh, performed very well and he earned assignment to the Detective Bureau. Uh, that was in 2005. While a detective, Tom completed training to be a school resource officer and a DARE officer. For the last 14 years, Officer Tosti has been to the department's DARE and then later the lead officer, Law Enforcement Against Drugs and has taught this to the many students who have passed through the fifth grade at either the Halstead or the Miriam Avenue School. His work in the schools has helped him to form and to maintain many valuable relations for the police department, and I think evidence of that is the fact that we have uh, Mr. Jeff Waldron, the principal, Sam Castro, the vice principal, and actually our former principal, Jim Tasker, is here tonight mm -hmm. from the Newton High School. So thank you uh, for being here tonight. Thank you. Uh, officer Tossi is also the department's community relations slash crime prevention officer. He has been invaluable in all of our community engagement activities, and I know that he honestly believes the connections we make in our community helps us to be more effective in our law enforcement duties. 
In addition to our schools, he has worked closely with such agencies as the Center for Prevention and Counseling. He even went up there uh, off duty and painted for them, right? When they, when they had uh, a little expansion. Was it the clear room you painted for him? Yes. Um, he's worked uh, also with Project Self-Sufficiency and, and DIFUS. Uh, while serving as a detective, Tom Tossey was always reliable and genuinely caring and saw every case through to the end, leaving no stone left unturned. He was the lead detective in numerous sexual assault investigations and worked all kinds of major crimes from kidnapping to homicide and aggravated assaults. Throughout it all, one of Tom's most outstanding qualities, though, is his often self-deprecating -de sense of humor. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. I've many times found that a quick stop back in the detective bureau when Tom was working would serve as a good little pick-me-up in the late afternoon, as you'd always either leave laughing or just maybe smiling and shaking your head. And humor is important in this line of work. For the last couple of months, he's been tasked with being a coach to our newest patrol officer, Steve Nidal, who's also here tonight, someplace, there he is, um, and who is, he's undergoing field training currently. It is really for all these reasons uh, that I recommend without hesitation that Tom Tossey's promotion, for Tom Tossey, Tossey to be promoted to sergeant, and I look forward to his continued leadership and supervise, uh, supervision of a patrol squad for many years to come. Tom. department for the last, I don't know, 18 years here. Um, work with probably some of the best police officers in this county. Um, we work a lot with other agencies and I can say that our, our police department is probably uh, top notch um, from lieutenants on down. I want to also thank Sergeant um, Frank Philharwood retired. He actually trained me when I went to Detective Bureau. Um, so uh, as a school resource officer as well, so thank you. Um, Mr. Waldron and uh, Ms. Castro, thank you for being here. And fantastic. Um, we, 14 years, 15 years being up there, quite a, bit, quite a long time up to high school. So uh, uh, really good. So um, I, I just want to thank everyone. Thank you so much for the, to the, the council. Thank you for, um, recommending me and uh, so just to be clear so it's top notch from the lieutenant's down <laughs> 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 that's, 
sense of humor, Chief. I just wanted to make sure you were listening. I goes around saying. So thank you everyone for coming. here for a moment for uh, the paper and family members to take pictures um, up in the front. So, Sergeant Tosti. All right, we're going to continue with our meeting. Um, the uh, Perhaps the other reason why so many people are in attendance tonight, thank you to our two newspapers of record um, for uh, promoting the fact that we're having this presentation tonight. So, Tom, if you want to lead us in. Yeah, we asked a uh, representative from the Sussex County Health Department, uh, Kayla Shelley, to come and give a presentation on tick safety. Hi, everybody. Kayla, Hi. come on up. My name's Kayla. I'm a public health nurse at Sussex County Department of Health. Yep, so we'll have you speak into the microphone just so it's yeah, picked up it's a little bit for the recording. All right, so this is a little bit about tick-borne diseases. So what are tick-borne diseases? They're illnesses that can be spread to humans by the bite of an infected tick. The most common tick-borne diseases in New Jersey are Lyme disease, ehrlichiosis, anaplasmosis, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, and babesiosis. So it is possible to be infected with more than one tick-borne disease at the same time. How do tick-borne diseases spread? Ticks become infected when feeding on small infected mammals, and an infected tick can then infect a person through a tick bite. How do ticks find their hosts? By detecting breath, body odors, body heat, moisture, and vibrations. Um, contrary to popular belief, ticks do not fly, jump, or fall from trees. Many species will hold onto grass with their first set of legs outstretched, waiting to grab onto a host when they brush by. You can see an example of that in the picture right there. It's called questing. Um, some attach quickly to the skin, while others wander looking for an area where skin is thinner to attach, such as behind your ear, inside your belly button. Um, so they cannot be easily brushed off due to the barb hooks on their mouth part. So they're not like mosquitoes. They don't come and bite you and leave. They stay on you. So their saliva does contain cement-like substance that keeps them firmly attached. Numbing properties so the host can't feel attachment. And anticoagulant to keep the host blood flowing. So who gets tick-borne diseases? People who spend a lot of time outdoors, especially from April to September, have a greater risk of becoming infected. And the life cycle of a tick. So there's four life stages. Uh, you can see an example of that in the picture. The egg, the six-legged larva, the eight-legged nymph, and the adult. And they must eat blood at every stage to survive. Um, they can take up to three years to complete their full life cycle. Survival and development are dependent on the environment and the availability of hosts. And death for a tick usually comes from starvation, dehydration, egg laying, old age, um, rather than from predation. So these are the three most common uh, disease-causing ticks in New Jersey. Uh, the black leg deer tick, American dog tick, and the lone star tick. I wanted to talk a little bit about each. Um, so. The deer tick, um, the diseases they spread are Lyme disease, anaplasmosis, babesiosis, and Powassan disease. Um, what bites the nymph and the adult female? You can see a picture of each. Um, the adult female is all the way to the right, and it's to the left on the bottom. Um, when, when temperatures are above freezing, the greatest risk is spring through fall. Um, adult females have a reddish brown tear shaped body with a dark brown hood. Um, and the size, uh, the nymphs are the size of a poppy seed, and the adult females are the size of a sesame seed. Is there any way to back it out so you can see the whole PowerPoint picture? Uh, not sure. Maybe not. <clears throat> Just so we can stay on track here.
Oh, on the right. other TVs, I think. Oh, on the back TV, it's the full there. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the American dog tick, the diseases they spread are Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever and Tularemia, and what bites adult females. When April through August, and the adult females have a dark brown body with whitish markings on the hood. And the size, the nymphs are also the size of a poppy seed, and the unfed adults are a little bit bigger than the size of a watermelon seed. Next is a lone star tick. Um, what diseases they transmit are ehrlichiosis and tularemia. Yeah. What bites are the nymphs again and the adult females again? When April through September in the northeast. Um, and the coloring, the adult females have a brown body with a white spot on the hood. And the size, uh, again, size of a, the nymphs are the size of a poppy seed and the adult females are the size of a sesame seed. So some of you guys might have heard about uh, the new tick in town. This is the Asian longhorn tick. So the first finding was in the United States. Uh, it was in New Jersey in 2017. It was actually found on a sheep in Hunterdon County. Um, since then, it's been found on pets, livestock, wildlife, and people. Um, and in other countries, bites from these ticks have made people and animals seriously ill. Um, research is still ongoing with this. So I wanted to touch on the Powassan virus um, because of recent uh, happenings in Sussex County. So Powassan virus is a tick-borne illness transmitted mainly by the bite of an infected black leg tick, the deer tick, which is the first one we talked about. Um, symptoms include fever, headache, vomiting, weakness, and confusion. Um, some people don't exhibit any symptoms at all. So it's not new to New Jersey or Sussex County. Um, there's been six confirmed cases in Sussex County since 2015. Um, there's been two confirmed cases in Sussex County this year, um, one of which did pass. Um, there is a greater risk for developing complications from the Powassan virus if other medical conditions exist. Um, and the best protection against this virus is uh, to follow the recommended preventative measures against tick bites, which we're going to talk about in a minute here. So this chart I just wanted to put up here just to show you that um, ticks can be hard to identify once they're engorged. They can enlarge its size 20 to 50 fold or 200 times its weight once they're fed. Um, it is important to identify what type of tick um, bit you because uh, that could tell the doctor what diseases uh, you could possibly get and what you need to be treated for. Um, so what are the symptoms of tick-borne diseases? So you can see up there the classic bullseye rash. Um, you could also have tiredness, fever, chills, headaches, stiff necks, muscle aches, joint pains, a big one, uh, dizziness, nausea, paralysis. Um, when do symptoms occur? Initial symptoms usually show up within two to four weeks of being bitten. You can see um, some symptoms start to show at different times with each disease. Um, a general rule of thumb is that within 30 days, the symptoms would show up. And how can they be diagnosed? So tick-borne diseases are very hard to diagnose. Um, they're often based on clinical signs and symptoms, a history of a tick bite or tick exposure. And in Sussex County, we're always exposed. Um, and you could also have laboratory findings that could draw blood. So why diagnosis is important? It's to prevent potential complications, which include a brain infection, a heart infection, heart valve infection, all of which are serious and potentially life-threatening. So what's the treatment? Most tick-borne diseases are caused by bacteria and can be treated with antibiotics. Now, as per the CDC, a tick typically needs to be attached to you for 36 to 48 hours before it can transmit to disease. Um, but some studies have shown that the disease can be transmitted within less time, certain types of diseases. Um, they say early treatment can be effective, and for most people, the prognosis is good and symptoms go away after treatment. So how to prevent tick-borne diseases? Um, know where the ticks are. Uh, ticks live in or near wooded or grassy areas. You want to keep your yard clean. You want to mow lawns, clear brush, remove leaf litter, and apply insecticides. Uh, use EPA registered repellent with DEET on the skin and permethrin on clothing and boots. Uh, cover up, wear long sleeves and pants tucked into socks to prevent ticks from getting under clothes. And shower. Um, showering can help find uh, and wash unattached ticks. So they say um, if you'd entered a tick prone area, you want to do a survey upon leaving before getting back into vehicles, uh, once back at the workstation, and when getting home. So the best protection, again, you can achieve is by using a repellent that contains permethrin on your clothes and one that contains DEET for your skin. 
So this is a little bit about the insecticide. So brethren, um, they say for each of them, you want to follow the label on the product. Um, so you want to spray this while your clothes are off um, your body and let the clothes dry completely before wearing them. They say you don't want a quick spritz, but also don't want to be drenching your clothes. You want to spray enough for your clothes to become damp. Um, and you, you can wear them um, and retreat them out about uh, after six washings. Um, now DEET, it comes in vari varying concentrations, ranging from 4% to 100%. Uh, concentrations of 30% are the best, they say, um, and generally provide protection for up to eight hours. So these you want to apply repellents to only expose skin or clothing. And when applying to your face, you want to spray on your hands first and then rub uh, your, onto your face. And at the end of the day, you want to wash the treated area with soap and water. So this is uh, just a little bit about checking for ticks. So they do hide. So they could be under the arms, in and around the ears, inside the belly button, in the back of the knees, in and around the hair, between the legs, around the waist, on the scalp. So this is about a little bit about removing a tick. So you want to use fine tip tweezers to grasp the tick as close to the skin surface as possible. You want to pull upward with steady, even pressure. Do not twist or jerk the tick, because this could cause the mouth parts to break off and remain in the skin. Um, if this does happen, uh, you want to try to remove the mouth parts with tweezers. But if you're unable to do so, um, you want to just leave them there, because sometimes digging in the skin can cause more harm than good. Um, and after removing a tick, you want to thoroughly clean the bite area with your and your hands with soap and water. If you don't have tweezers, uh, it's suggested to put gloves on or cover your hands with tissue paper and then use your fingers. You don't want to handle the tick with bare hands because infectious agents may enter through mucous membranes or breaks in the skin. And you want to grab the tick as close to its mouth as you possible. Uh, do not grab the tick around its bloated belly. Because uh, incorrect removal can result in mouth parts being left behind, uh, which we talked about before, it can result in localized infection. Compression of the tick's body, which may cause infectious fluids to be squeezed back into the host. Puncture of the tick's body may spill infectious fluids onto the host or onto the person removing the tick. Uh, and injury or irritation to the tick may result in it regurgitating infectious fluids into the host. So that we're going to skip over. Um, so this is looking at the numbers. So this is the most recent uh, from the CDC. So you can see for every single disease, the numbers have increased. And why is this happening? Why the rising numbers? So the rising incidence of tick-borne diseases is due to a number of factors. Uh, increased tick abundance, overabundant deer population, increased recognition of the disease, establishment of more residents in wooded areas, uh, greater potential for contact with ticks, and the change in climate patterns. And for future effort, um, we want effective biological control and host reduction techniques. We need improved uh, identification and surveillance of ticks. Uh, emphasis on community education. Uh, continued education for healthcare uh, professionals. And investigation of other avenues of prevention, such as vaccines. Um, so in conclusion, tick-borne diseases are spread by the bites of infected ticks. Most infections occur in the late spring, uh, in the spring and summer months. And you want to prevent disease by wearing repellent, checking for ticks daily, and calling your doctor if you present with any concerning symptoms. Uh, for more information, you can go to the New Jersey Department of Health or the CDC. That's it. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you. Kayla, thank you very much for your presentation because we have um, many members of the public here yeah. I'll go ahead and reopen the meeting to the public for anyone that might have any questions sure. for Kayla sure come on up a question. yeah the question is I see on that presentation was uh, was mentioned but I don't see a botanella mentioned yeah um, this is the most recent that I could find and I thought that would be what I should talk about because of the recent incidents that happened Only reason just county. to add to what you say we did a tick drag up <coughs> in Pike County mm -hmm. in, in Milford itself and we did one in Dingman's. And through that tick drip, we found out that out of the 35 ticks or so in, in uh, Milford, 18 of them were positive for Barnella. Not one was Borrelia. Yeah. Okay? And then when we went to uh, Dingman's, there was no Barnella, and it was all Borrelia. You know, I mean, plus the other ones. So 
uh, I think, and being a person that had Barnell two or three times, mm -hmm. it's, it's something that... Uh, yeah, there's that, no uh, doubt we're a little bit behind the times with um, the tick prevention. You know, we have a lot of stuff for the mosquitoes, right? We right. have a program for mosquitoes, the spraying and the um, testing and things like that. And, you know, it's not just on a county level, it's on a state level. Right. It's there's even above brochures. that. You there's know? brochures. I have like 500 at home, and, and they're good brochures yeah. in the state. I was just wondering maybe think about in the future mentioning Barnella because yeah. it, there's it, a lot to talk about. This is a big topic. Yes. If, a, if a tick comes in your house through your door and goes on your bed, you never have to see the, uh, you never really have to see the, 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 the grass or, or outside. Yeah, you know? it's true. And, and it so, and, and then like we talked about before, you know us, yeah. so we advocate for tick testing. Mm -hmm. We really believe tick testing is the way to go. So. Uh, but that's the one that, that Barnell is, is really coming up in the area. It wasn't before, but it's really being, I don't want to say popular, but it's, it's a lot of people with Barnell. So. Yeah. Like I said, you know, there's a lot to be talked about with this topic. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, and we, there's a lot to be done with it. There right, is. and that's what we do to educate, you do to educate on tick-borne diseases. Yeah. The and more people if, that know Right, that. if we all do it, it it's really excellent. And sir, can you just state your name and who you're with? Yeah. My name is Marty Faze, and I'm part of the Tick Squad. Okay. Okay. Just so everybody yeah. knows. Yep. Okay. Kayla, uh, John Selma, part of the Tick Squad. Could you go over the uh, slide that has the numbers on it? Is it possible for you to back that? So that's from the CDC. That's from the 2016, 2017. So according to that, it says there were 42,000 in 2017 of Lyme disease cases mm -hmm. in Sussex County, or is that New Jersey? That's New Jersey. New Jersey. New Jersey. Okay. All right. Because I thought it was Sussex County and those numbers would be. Okay. All right. Thank you. Those numbers would be staggered. <laughs> Hi, Kayla. Thank you for doing this. Appreciate that. I'm also from the Tick Squad. I had the pleasure of meeting her at a YMCA fair that uh, a lot attended for the children specifically. And uh, I like your presentation. I do have to make one comment though. Sure. In regards to getting bit, you don't always have to get a, a, a rash mm -hmm. or a bullseye, Absolutely. correct? You so don't. maybe if you just tell you people don't. that, because they think, oh, I can get a no, rash. No, that's not true. That's not true at all. Um, you know, some people don't accept the symptoms. That's why we say if you do get bit by a tick, you should call your doctor right away. You know, because what we were talking about before, you know, you, uh, you don't exhibit symptoms right away. Some people don't even get the rash. Right. You know, it might be a little late for that. You want to get treated as soon as possible. And be your own advocate. <laughs> I too. That's a big one. Yeah. The more people you know that know about this, the better. You want to educate yourself really to protect mm -hmm. yourself, um, because right now it is about personal protection. We don't really have, you know, anything. Is you know, anything being done to eliminate the tips? some kind of spray or something right to eliminate now, the population because it's out of control. Yeah. Right now, no. Um, there is a bill that's in legislature that's hopefully going to come down and then it will give us the opportunity to test and spray and control the ticks. And that will take 5, 10, I 20. Wish I, I wish I had that answer for you. <laughs> I wish you did too. I'm staying out of the woods. I've been sick three times. I'm done. I'm sorry. And I've gone to the emergency room and they don't test you for all the different you know, so also hospitals and doctors need to be educated exactly. in all the different diseases exactly. ticks can give. And that's why they I test you for regular Lyme, and if you don't have yeah. that, they send you home. And they don't realize that you can be infected with more than one disease as well. That, right? That's so true. That's a big thing My too. children's pediatrician diagnosed me. I had that spotted fever last fall, and if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. And you live, you live in New You live in New Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes. So the, vaccine. Yes. the vaccine. So that's, there used to be a vaccine for Lyme disease. Apparently it was making people uh, sick, um, so they pulled it off the shelf. So hopefully that'll be in the works again, you know, eventually. There was a vaccine, and people that had the vaccine that work out in the field, a couple of people did get sick, yeah. and they sued the company, and they mm -hmm. took it off the market. That's what happened. But those that had it, and it worked, they still don't get sick. What happened with the vaccine, because so, I was part of that way back when the vaccine was around, is that they had a series of shots. They pulled it off the market because what they found out through mm -hmm. the research is that with some people it was causing like a Lyme arthritis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they, that was the part, the big part of that vaccine. Uh, they are coming out with another one. Uh,
It's about two year or two away. It's supposed to be based on the immune system, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Fingers crossed. Dogs have vaccines. <laughs> and dogs also dogs. get Lyme disease too, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. testing yeah. for them. There's treatment for them. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we're not alone in this. <laughs> Our well, listen, animals kind of, are. Have a comment yeah. about killing ticks. The real big problem is field mice. Yes because the reservoir, the container for this bacteria are field mice. Mm -hmm. White-footed mouse, right? Yep. The more field mice you have, the higher the incidence of ticks becoming infected mm -hmm. because that's, that's where the nymphs go to feed. <coughs> they feed on small animals, preferably the field mice. So if you start killing mice, you may be able to make a dent in it, but it's just not the ticks. All good conversation for sure. Any other questions or? How long does it when they bite? How long? If they bite, I take it off right away. So that was one of the things I put in there. So ask for the CDC, right? It's 36 to 48 hours. But some diseases, and you can keep it for 36 to 48 hours. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
my family doctor not be able to do the same thing. I think it comes back to what someone said about being your own best advocate, right? Exactly. And, um, you know, mm-hmm. really paying attention to what's going on in terms of symptoms and um, expressing those concerns. And I probably requesting, right? Um, someone else said, or a couple people said that, you know, they were tested for limes and not anything else. But with this type of education, and the more I think that people know, and the more um, questions that people can ask to advocate on behalf of themselves, I think would be helpful in a doctor's office to, you know, request those other those other tests. So. Um, um, Kayla, I certainly want to thank you um, for coming in and doing the presentation. Certainly everyone from the Tick Squad and uh, um, everyone else that came and asked questions. Um, you know, what a good opportunity to kind of just yeah. disseminate some information. Um, I know that there are other municipalities that are discussing the topic as well. So um, any final uh, thoughts or comments or questions for Kayla before she heads? Mr. Malone? just host the disease in its body. It doesn't have to get it from a bite. It can just host the disease. Yeah. So it's genetically prone to host the disease. Some animals are affected by it too, and some are not. You know. So some, like okay. those other animals, are, if you're cat, you're dog, gets bitten by a tick, does that, that gets transferred? No. Not to my knowledge. Maybe you guys can say, say it better. That? Dog, cat gets I didn't need a question. I mean, I know that dogs and humans and cats exhibit symptoms. Can um, it be dashed through? Is that what it said? If, if, if the tick is still on you. Passing it on. Part of the tick feeding process is to expel, the only place it can expel the pathogens or the food that it eats is through its mouth. So it intakes through its mouth and it pushes out through its mouth. You're talking so about the tick. About the tick. So I'm, the tick talking, is I'm asking about that tick has bitten you. Me, right? Dog, um, cat. Ego kisses his wife, or if the dog kisses so you, then that's when the tick eats and it pulls in pathogens, it has that pathogens in its stomach. Now, if it goes, it molts, it goes into its next life stage. That tick is carrying that pathogen. Now it goes and it feeds on another animal. It can push that pathogen into that animal. So now it's infecting other animals. Well, if that animal. That's my whole point. Yeah. Yes, the other animals now, when they bite you, or me, or anybody, or like you, can they pass it on? I have lines and I kiss my husband. Well, there's uh, a controversy in the both community tower transferring pathogens through sex and through kissing, and they still haven't confirmed that. I can give you an example of my daughter. My daughter had my grandchildren. She passed three co-infections onto the kids through birth. And now they're all fighting, now that they've gone through puberty, they're all fighting the diseases. And my daughter had to quit her job. Hmm. So it's it's a it's a tough disease once you get it to get rid of it. And it's kind of it's it's communicable. Say that again? It's communicable. It could that's possibly. What that's right now to that's still up in the air. Still up in the air. Yeah. They're still looking yes, at okay. it. Okay. Just they're not sure, so you can't come out and say it is, it isn't. Okay. It's bad enough the way it is. Yeah, no. person. And to answer your question about the mice, 70 to 90 percent of the mice have this Lyme disease pathogen, pathogen. naturally in their body. And it doesn't kill the mice because they have a symbiotic relationship with the bacteria, which is interesting. Okay, so I'm going to, yes, thank you very much, Halo. So I'm going to close that portion.
And uh, Kayla, you don't have to stay around since we did a, a question and answer for you there. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to council and manager reports. Um, so as I mentioned before, I wanted to um, congratulate Chief Richards um, on his recent award from PARI um, and, and the Newton Police Department and the relationship with the Center for Prevention and Counseling. I also want to congratulate our own council, um, our attorney uh, Ursula Leo, uh, congratulations on becoming president of the Sussex County Bar Association. So um, good luck to you um, on your term. Um, Tom will probably expand on this later, but I just wanted to make sure that everyone's aware that the townwide garage sale is coming up um, the weekend of August 2nd through the 4th. And while August seems like it's kind of far away, um, it's not really. And applications are in the clerk's office and have to be completed by July 26th. So I know that there will be a map prepared and some promotion. Um, there's already been some promotion in um, our newspapers of record, but the townwide garage sale is going to be the first weekend in August. We also have just started promoting um, something new that's going to be happening this fall. Uh, the Town of Newton Recreation Department um, has put out a little social media about this, but we're going to be um, talking more about this as we approach the time. But um, in um, recognition and in honor of Veterans Day, uh, the Town of Newton this year is going to be sponsoring the Flags of Honor um, program. And this is going to be a display of flags on the, la on the lawn in the Town of Newton, um, right in front of the municipal building, I should say. And the American flags are going to be rec are, will recognize and show honor to veterans who have dedicated themselves to the protection of our freedom. And flags will be on display throughout the month of November. Um, this is not a fundraising initiative for the town of Newton. Rather, this is um, an, the ability for people to adopt a flag and dedicate. Uh, the flag in honor or in memory of a special veteran. The flags are going to be $30 and all um, donations, all the monies raised are going to benefit Community Hope's Hope for Veterans program. Um, we are going to have a ceremony on Saturday, November 9th at 11 a.m. Um, on the front lawn of the municipal building. Um, I'm hoping that there are hundreds and hundreds of flags. Um, we have a lot of uh, history of um, individuals that have lived in Sussex County, certainly in the town of Newton, that um, have served in our armed forces, either are currently serving, formerly serving, and certainly um, Councilwoman Diglio could speak to um, the honor and the beauty of our Memorial Day services, et cetera. And I think that this is going to be a special edition so. um, in November. Um, I'm really happy that, that we're going to be um, having this, this recognition. Um, if you are going to participate, the deadline is October 31st. Uh, so information can be found um, on the town's social media, on our website. Um, and uh, Tom may also have some more information about uh, if that's through the clerk's office, et cetera, during his portion. Um, I did want to remind everyone, as um, Tracy Paparella did as well, that uh, we do have bus service running on a daily basis to the Hackettstown pool, and signups are online. That started on July 1st. Um, and I think that's all I have for right now. Deputy Mayor Flynn? Uh, nothing for me at this time. Thank you. Councilwoman Diglio? Yes. On June 27, 2019, Kimberly Williams and myself attended the 15th Annual Awards Luncheon sponsored by the Sussex County Economic Development Partnership and Corp. While the town was nominated for the Municipal Award, we unfortunately did not receive it. But I am proud to announce that CWF and Corp, owned by John Quiselate, did receive the Business Investment Award. Alex Cable, president of Thor Labs, received the Distinctive Leadership Award, and Sussex County Community College received the Training and Workforce Development Award. My thanks to all three for their contributions to our town, because I am sure you recognize many of you know, their names and what they have done for this town so far, and will continue to do for quite some time. Anything else, Councilman DeLeo? Um, only that I've already purchased my flag today in honor of my brother who passed away. He was a Vietnam veteran and died from his exposure to Agent Orange. So I bought his flag today. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Schlaffer is not here. Councilman Dixon? Nothing at this time. All right. Um, Mr. Russo? Thank you, Mayor. 
Uh, first item on social media, we're promoting the Top 10 Reasons uh, contest why someone should visit the town of Newton. That's on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You have until noon on July 11th to submit your Top 10 list, so please do so. Uh, second item, we do have a rec schedule of different events that's being promoted on social media. Uh, Michelle's been working diligently on that. Uh, Zumba classes, uh, we have a trip to the Bronx Zoo. We have book workshop, we got ice cream social, teen yoga, Casa in the park. Um, we have a trip to medieval times. We're working on Giants Jets preseason, uh, family fun and movie night at Memory Park. So a lot of different activities. Some are at Memory Park, some are at Firehouse One, uh, some are at Merriam Ave School. So check out social media for the rec uh, summer schedule. Uh, this Saturday, July 13th, we kick off the Town of Newton Thor Lab summer concert series at the college. It's free. Uh, it's from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, first act is the Andrea Nyes Band. And she's very well known and very good. Check her out on YouTube. So that's this Saturday, July 13th at the college, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. She does three 45-minute sets, so it'll be a nice, nice long concert, and there's no charge. Uh, I want to congratulate John Questelate. I know you talked about mm -hmm. the EDP, but he was recognized by Congressman Gottheimer in the fourth Hometown Hero Awards today. Mm -hmm. um, so congratulations to John. Uh, John is doing a lot of beautification and revitalization here in town, especially in the downtown with the uh, Style Shop building that came out great and his uh, pending Bula's application before the planning board next week. So congratulations to John and appreciate all that he does for the town. So kudos to him for being a hometown hero. Uh, also, coming up in July, July 26th, Memory Park, 8 p.m., A Dog's Way Home will be first uh, movie uh, for us for the movie nights this summer. So please mark your calendar down. Friday, July 26th, Memory Park, 8 p.m., Dog's Way Home. They're taking donations of canned dog food uh, for the food pantry because the food pantry does provide dog food for families that need assistance with um, items for their pets. So please help assist. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, we have the sidewalk sale and garage sale. So it's the garage sale through Lorraine's office, but we're encouraging businesses on Spring Street to participate that weekend with their sidewalk sale that was very successful last year. So that will be a lot of uh, shopping for people and here in Newton, August 2nd through August 4th. As the mayor mentioned, I, um, I was proud to set up the Flags of Honor. It's actually something that my town in Bernard's Township has done for many years. Um, I have extra copies of the flyers. Um, so, if you take a little, just pass it down. But yeah, it's um, something we've done in Bernard's for, for several years. I participated when I was on the township committee. Um, so we're looking forward to, like the mayor said, having lots of flags on municipal property. Um, people that do the $30 contribution to Community Hope also get a lapel pin. That'll say Town of Newton Flags of Honor. Uh, the mayor will be speaking at the event. We're also inviting the congressman, state senator, and other dignitaries, as well as rep representatives from Community Hope. So that's November 9th, 11 a.m. So very happy to do that. And also in the fall, we're going to start promoting it now, but in the fall, a little bit heavier. Social media influencers um, from the high school and the college. We, we want to start getting the high school students and the college students. So. I came up with a program to get um, participation from the students to be social media influencers because they are an untapped resource for us to pull people into the businesses and activities in the town. So we're going to start promoting that and then we'll push that heavy in the fall when school's back in session. And those are the eight items. And Tracy, uh, I have a meeting this Friday with Suburban to get a pool update. Um, I'm looking to cancel the July 22nd council meeting if the council is okay with that. So I'll probably have an update at that August meeting. So that'll be a brief update that I'll provide at that point. And at that point, I think the report should be pretty much ready to go. But then our next council meeting is not until September 11th. And that's when they'll do the full blown PowerPoint test results, recommendations, cost estimates. Like I want everything wrapped up for that meeting so that if you know, if it's simply, you know, the plaster job that we thought it might be and as a recommendation, then we can put, start putting the bit specs together and get it out of the gate quickly. Um, so I'll have an update at the first meeting in August uh, for on the pool. That's it. Um, I just wanted to ask a question on the um, movies in the park. Is there somewhere I can email out that schedule to, like, family members? Because I'm on that website now. And I yeah, I can get you the flyers. 
Okay. I'll get you the Are they flyers. on the website though? Um, well, through social media, everything's being promoted. Through social media. But yeah, okay. I can get you the flyers. I'll send it to. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other reports at this time? Okay, let's move on to ordinances. We have introduction of ordinance 2019-7 tonight. This is an ordinance revising article one of chapter 57 animals and chapter 320 zoning of the code of the town of Newton regarding animals. Uh, so we've been talking about this ordinance for um, a number of meetings. Um, tonight is introduction and then at our next meeting we'll have uh, open public hearings, etc. cetera. Uh, do I have a motion to introduce? I will make a motion to introduce ordinance 2019-7. I'll second. I have a motion by Councilwoman Diglio and a second by Councilman Dixon to introduce ordinance 2019-7. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Mrs. Diglio? Yes. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mayor LaCroix? Yes. And the public hearing is August 5th, Mayor. Thank you. We have no old business tonight. We'll move on to the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and non-controversial by the town council and will be approved by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member so requests, in which case the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. On the agenda, Tom, can you just go through them? There aren't that many, but then I believe Councilman Dixon uh, will be recusing from one of the checks. Yeah, we have a resolution to approve Steve Benson's sick uh, vacation leave payout based on the contract. We have a cancellation of a appropriation balance is 157. We have a grant application for Halstead Street and Madison Street Project Section 2. We have the tax collector submitted information for the electronic tax sale. We have the right-of-way for uh, utilization for Planet Network Sync for fiber optic cabling, which is a great project. And then we have bills and vouchers for payment. Matt's going to recuse from one particular check and then separate off consent mm -hmm. chamber of commerce social affair permit for uh, taste of milk. Um, which Councilman Dix, uh, Diglio will also be recusing. Councilman Dixon, that check number? Yeah, it's uh, 41797. Lorraine, from. you have that? 41797. Um, I do want to make mention um, resolution 161 2019. We do have Rob Boyle here um, from uh, Planet Networks. Uh, so thank you for your input at the last meeting. Um, and uh, as you'll see uh, in all the materials, um, movement on, on that particular resolution. Um, again, um, the town of Newton one, being one of the first municipalities to um, pass the resolution in support of the uh, fiber optic cabling um, and for use of that cabling in our right of way. So uh, thank you for your partnership on that and uh, expansion of those services to our residents and businesses. Um, any other resolutions f that need to be pulled for further discussion or questions, comments? All right, do I have a motion on the consent agenda? <coughs> I will make a motion on the consent agenda. I'll second that motion. All right. I have a, uh, a motion on the consent agenda by Councilwoman Diglio, a second by Deputy Mayor Flynn. Uh, roll call vote, please. Dixon? Yes. Diglio? Yes, but I recuse from the application for the uh, Greater Newton Chamber of Commerce. And we'll do that separately, yeah, I think. Oh, yeah. Did you do that separate? Okay. Yeah. So you're okay? Yes. Yes. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Yes, and you have Councilman uh, Councilman Dixon's Check number. Yep, 41797. All right, so we'll move on to that application. This is an application for a special permit for social affairs from the Greater Newton Chamber of Commerce located at 145 Spring Street in Newton to be held on Monday, September 9, 2019 from 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. with a rain date of September 10, 2019. This is for the Taste of Newton, um, I believe. All right, so uh, I need a motion to approve this application. I'll make a motion to approve the application. I'll second that motion. I have a motion to uh, approve the application for the Greater Newton Chamber of Commerce from Councilman Dixon and a second by Deputy Mayor Flynn. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Mrs. Diglio? I recluse from approval of the application. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mayor LaFoy? Yes. Thank you. All right. We don't have any other discussion items scheduled, but um, Mr. Russo, we want to talk about that July meeting. Um, I will do that under Council Manager comments. Okay. Yeah. Any other discussions at this time? Okay, seeing none, uh, we will reopen the meeting to the public. Anyone that wishes to um, make a comment, statement, please come forward, state your name and address for the record.
Robert Boyle from Planet Networks. We're at Four Park Place uh, here in Newton. And I just want to say thank you for your uh, cooperation and uh, approving our uh, resolution. So thank you. And happy belated birthday. I think it was this week, right? Uh, it's the 11th, actually. Oh, so well, a couple days. Birthday. So thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you again. Any other comments from the public? All right, seeing none, we'll close that portion of the meeting and then we'll move to council manager comments. And um, Tom, I just wanted to echo also uh, congratulations to Sergeant Tom Tosti. Um, he's been with the force for a very long time. Um, my own children went through um, the program when he was a DARE officer, which is when I first met him. And um, I know he's well respected and um, uh, always receives a warm welcome when he goes to the schools. I was with him not too long ago at Newton High School. and. Uh, a lot of the students interact with him in the hallways, and I think he's going to be a great addition um, in his new role as sergeant. Did also want to extend our congratulations to John Questlate for being recognized this morning by Congressman Gottheimer in his local Heroes um, Awards that was in Bergen County earlier this morning. Um, you know, we have the opportunity as a town and as a council and as a community to um, recognize individuals uh, to get that spotlight under Congressman um, Godhammer. We appreciate that opportunity. Um, and uh, if you'll recall, um, Isabel Costello was the one who received the honor last time. Yes. Um, and, you know, if Isabel, is, if Isabel was here, she would tell you that she's gotten a lot of um, recognition and support and expansion in her um, weekend bag collection program. Um, you know, and a lot of that started kind of here, um, and she's been out in the community expanding that. So. Um, thanks for submitting that application um, or nomination for, for John. Um, if he was here, he'd have a big smile on his face and um, be happy about see that as well. See him next Wednesday. Yeah, we'll see him next Wednesday. Um, and also the recognition that he got from the Sussex County Economic mm -hmm. Development Partnership. Um, and again, I think just to expand on that for a second, Sandy, there were, I think we discussed this in the last meeting, there were more than 10 or 12 or so Newton businesses or residences yes. or um, portions of the gover government governing entities that were nominated um, by the Sussex County Economic Development Partnership. And I think if you don't read about that in the paper or if you don't see it or if you're not seeing the promotion of that, um, a lot of those kind of developments and projects kind of fly under the radar. Um, and so we like to talk about them because a lot of people don't necessarily see the changes that are happening on Spring Street in the business district on the spine and any of the six redevelopment projects that we have. But there is, there are things in motion and there, things are constantly in motion. And um, for those of you that attend the planning board meetings, um, you know, you're, you're hearing about those um, applications. I know Mr. Malone comes to many of those meetings, but there is definitely a lot to going on in the town of Newton. So it's great that the county, um, Economic Development Partnership is also recognizing those efforts as well. Other council, other council comments before we move on to the July I, meeting. I would just echo the same um, sentiments and thoughts about Tom Tosti and his promotion. He's a there's nobody else in the department at this current time that I felt would be recognized for a leadership position that would you know rise to the occasion. Um, you know he's shown he's shown a lot of responsibility. Over the years, he's you know he's well respected by members of the community, the department, um, people on the council. Um, he's, he's well deserving of a promotion, and I feel confident that he'll fill that role very nicely. Yeah, you know, I mean, the entire department does a good job at community policing, yeah. is what they call it. But he specifically and individually has been doing community policing as part of his entire career. Before right? the community Before policing was, was a, a thing. thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. For and sure. When I go to another community because I spend a lot of time outside of Sussex County for my for my career and I and I mention Newton and I talk about Newton and the great things going on in the town and the police department and people are like what's you know what's so great about the police department they don't understand what a community police department does and how it like interacts with the community and all these different actions and and events and affiliations with the school and it really it really works in like a symbiotic relationship so it's nice to see that. There's others out there, and you know, you know when you live in a community that has a community police department. For sure. 
Anything else? The Anything? only other comment, Maureen, um, when it comes to ticks, there are treatments that you can put down on your lawn. I have done that this year. Okay, I'm I would just bound. I don't go anywhere. I like to hike. I like to be out in nature and until they come up with something to take care of that out in the woods. I'm okay. I'm done. <laughs> I was very sick last fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else, Councilman? No. So, That's it. Councilman Dixon. <laughs> All right, Mr. Russo. Uh, yeah, just a reminder about planning board next Wednesday. We'll have the application for the new Bula's building with the uh, commercial space and the 26 luxury apartments and be discussing the master plan recommendations. So if members of the public are interested, um, that would be the meeting to go to. And yeah. That's a good conversation. Yeah. And looking to cancel the July 22nd meeting, I'll be off that day and we don't have anything for the agenda um, for discussion or executive, so but it's up to the council. So this is that weird kind of transition year, right? Because formerly we were reorganizing on July 1st um, yeah. and wouldn't have that second meeting. So it's been a number of years that we haven't had that second council meeting in the month of July. Um, so this is really, I mean, at the council's pleasure. Uh, Dawn, what I did ask Tom the other day was if there was anything from a financial perspective in terms of uh, approving bills and vouchers, payments, things like that, that needed to be done or could be, could wait until the first August meeting. Um, anything well, we only have, <coughs> we only have one August meeting, right? Yeah, August 5th. So. Yeah, August 5th. Yeah. Yeah. August 5th. So if you're not, if you're, I have, if you have, if you're going to take off, I, this is just my opinion. That I have no problem when you're here at every council meeting. You no longer have a deputy uh, manager to, to delegate to. But my opinion is that it looks better that we have more consistent meetings. To have two months with one meeting, uh, even if the meeting is 15 minutes long and there's just council discussion, which sometimes can just be constructive in its own sense. Um, that that's just my opinion and. I am t totally comfortable with Tom not being here for that and somebody sitting in his stead. It would be Chief Richards, do you know his No, his I wouldn't schedule? have anybody. Oh, nobody? Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't. I'm not designating an active manager. Well, well that's just my opinion. Yeah, so no, we don't have, I mean, doesn't matter either way. I tend to agree only because our next meeting won't be until after September 9th. It would be more like, like the 11th. And that's quite a span between the 5th and the 11th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a long span, so at least if we have anything we want to discuss, if the public wants to come and we can talk to us about anything, meeting. Meeting. We brief should, meeting, but yeah. I think we should adjourn, but not uh, a quorum, but. Okay. okay. Thank you, and then now we have resolution 163 to go into executive. Yes, so. <clears throat> we do have an ex executive session items tonight. This is resolution 163-2019. This is a resolution providing for a meeting not open to the public in accordance with the provisions of the New Jersey Open Publics Meeting Act, NJSA 10-4-12. This is regarding contract negotiations regarding the Sussex County Bridge Q06 Bridge Project. Um, so we will ask uh, the audience to please step out. Um, you're welcome to stay in the lobby until after the executive, which we'll come back in session for. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks, Rob. I have a motion by Deputy Mayor Flynn and a second by Councilman Diglio to come out of executive session at 922. All in favor? Aye. Aye.